The Unknown Truth of Van Shoes A remarkable jewel to the skateboarding industry, the popularity of Van Shoes is unquestionable. But did you know the backstory of how the Van Shoe Company sailed through difficult financial turmoil to become what it is today? Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new video on this channel. Today in this video we'll be unveiling the truths behind the Van Shoe Company. And we'll get to the bottom of the thing, the way it pulled itself through difficult years by implementing specific strategies, and how did it become the cool shoe company from just being a company who made shoes primarily for the skateboarders. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Have you ever thought that how a company without any huge design change has not only survived all these years, but become one of the most popular shoes among people of all ages, especially now in 2022? Vans are so big that they compete with the giants like Nike and Converse, where Nike is about 10 times bigger in size as Vans, and on the other hand, Converse is twice as old. Vans are truly a unicorn in the shoe industry, because not only do they make the most popular shoes and are themselves a very popular and prosperous company at the moment, but the fact that they were able to accomplish all this just by their five signature styles. Formed back in 1966 by a guy named Paul Van Doren, the shoe company has been an unrivaled king among skateboarding enthusiasts. However, the buzz around these shoes is at a whole different level. From the fashion icons across the globe to grandpa and grannies, all wear Vans today. There are some features of Vans that never let them go irrelevant. Firstly, it was the rubber sole designed into the shape of a waffle that was a perfect match for skateboarding. Hence the slogan, Vans Off the Walls. Another reason for the unmatched popularity and reign in the shoe world was because the customers trusted the authenticity of the van shoes that no other brand could ever reach. So, I guess enough of buttering up the shoe company. Now let's talk about those hidden facts about the company that no one knows today. This guy Paul was working at a rubber factory when he decided to quit that and go start out on his own venture with his brother. His mantra for the van shoes was that he wouldn't engage any middleman to do the business and instead they would sell the shoes on their own to earn good profit and to maintain the authenticity of the shoes. The company would sell very well and became the favorite among the skateboarding community. What actually caused Vans to earn success was that the company used a sole double in size to what their competitors were using. And you might not believe it, but it was solely the sole of the Vans shoes that made them become such a hot deal. While the era of the 70s was very fruitful for Vans, as all the models and designs, their launch grabbed the attention of the market almost immediately. The most popular design model to this date is the old school, which came out in 1977. After giving out successful shoe models one after another, the company implemented some fine marketing strategies that worked out perfectly for them as well. For example, the Vans Company onboarded some famous skateboarders of the 70s era like Tony Alva and Stacy Peralta and gave them free van shoes for skating. And didn't stop there, they transported them to their skating arenas in vans. All was going well for the company, and it seemed that everything was perfectly falling into place for the Vans Company. You can judge the scale of success by the fact that the company saw its worth get doubled from 20 million to 45 million in these years, which was majorly caused by the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High, where the lead was seen wearing checkered vans. However, as with every other thing in the world that has reached the level of popularity that van shoes enjoy, it never came without hard work, struggle, and lots of crises down the line. That exact thing happened to vans in the 1980s, when they faced a crisis that caused the company to file for bankruptcy and the company had to rethink its business model to start again. The Vans crisis was different in a way because it wasn't caused by some external factor. However, it was the board of Vans itself that thought of expanding the company to other markets to capture the share from other opportunities available as well. However, 
Consider a situation where if tomorrow Toyota starts selling shoes, what would be your reaction? Well, whatever your reaction might be, mine was when I came to know that Vans was getting into the skydiving shoes, volleyball shoes, and whatnot. That's where they start losing. The brand element and identity that for the longest time was the authenticity of the shoes got lost somewhere in the greed of getting more. This was the reason for them to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Even to this date, I still wonder what they did that they somehow managed to pull themselves out of this mess. But they did it, and that's all that matters. One big success of Vans is owed to a model they released in 1988, Steve Caballero's signature high-top shoe that immediately captured the market. But I guess now it was time for a change. A natural change is inevitable. So in the same year, 1988, the investment firm McCown, DeLue and Company purchased Vans after paying a hefty price of $74 million to Paul, his brother, and other partners in the company. The deal the investment firm made fared them well. The company in the 90s went on to capture surfing and snowboarding, along with focusing on skateboarding as their trademark. Overall, it did great. For one, the skating was getting a lot of attention in these years, but it wasn't all rainbows and unicorns, as they saw some pitfalls in their profits, for which they had to relocate and they had to lay off many employees. However, all this laying off and the bad dream came to a halt at the end of the 90s, when they collaborated with Supreme and even purchased the Triple Crown of Surfing. However, in the early 2000s, they thought of entering other markets by focusing on designing the products out of their design features. This made the company lose its overall reputation and standing in the market. What made it all worse was that the company had no idea what they were doing wrong. So what do we all do in such a situation? Get help from outside. That's exactly what the company did. Starting in 2002, the company hired Ryan Pazibon, a known name in the footwear fashion world, and asked him to design a collection that would go hot in the market, though Pazibon was skeptical as to whether they would allow him to redesign the classics. The company was in turmoil, so it looked like they didn't have much of a choice at the time and they allowed him to do whatever he wanted, and it went out crazy. The new design features were designed so perfectly that they didn't lose their originality or authenticity at the time while adding some cool and new features to attract new customers. Making the vans look cool was their main target while designing the new lot. The next year, Vans released its Vault collection that was specifically designed to catch the attention of high-end customers, particularly boutiques and influencers. Now everything was set in the right direction by Ryan, and another major event took place for the Vans company. However, this event was a positive one, as Vans was once again acquired by a company based in North Carolina called VF Corp for a sizable $396 million in cash. This event took place in 2004. Though the VF Corp wasn't so popular itself, it owned some apparel companies, the North Face and Supreme are two to be mentioned. Since then, Vans have maintained the streak of being a famous and loved brand in the footwear industry across the globe. All the fame and prominence can be credited to the fact that people can still believe in the brand and its authenticity. They know that Vans, after all these years, will not let them down. Many tried to steal this stardom from them, but the perfect combination of classics, authenticity, and relevance couldn't be stolen from them. So. That's it for the video. I hope you liked and enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for future notifications. Do let us know about your feedback in the comments section. Until then, take care of yourself and I will see you guys in the next one.